Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Spiritism Live Talk Series promoted by the United States Spiritist Federation every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I am very happy to host this talk by Louise Balassa, who will be leading our live with the theme, The Elemental Spirits. Before we get to Louise, I have three announcements. First, there is a new weekly podcast-like series called Psychology and Spirituality, A Bridge to a Better Life, based on the works by Joanna DeAngelis. There is a new episode every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The Psychology and Spirituality weekly talks based on the works of Joanna DeAngelis will offer a safe space to confront, compare, correlate and expand spirituality concepts from a psychological lens, bringing insights, actionable tips, and real-role advice to help you lead a better life. Please subscribe to the notifications of new episodes at the USSF YouTube channel. Second, the USSF is hosting the 17th U.S. Spiritist Symposium on September 30th of this year in Portland, Oregon. The symposium will focus on the topic of spiritual path to mental balance with a full day program including talks, Q&A sessions, youth panel, kids and youth activities, save the date. Finally, on the screen, please note there is a QR code. If you want to help the USSF produce more publications and promote spiritism to everyone, please scan the QR code on screen for your donation. Now, back to Louise. Together with everyone who is watching this live broadcast, I want to give you a very warm welcome. It's so good to have you here to discuss the elemental spirits. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Peter. Uh, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Great. Uh, today so we're going to talk. Yeah. Before yes. we, uh, you start to enlighten us in the next hour, I'd like to introduce Louise more formally. So Louise Balazza is an electronics engineer with an MSc from Carnegie Mellon University and a Manchester University MBA. He is a worker at Grupo Fraternal, a spiritist center in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where he serves in the mediumistic meetings and also teaches classes on spiritism. Please take this opportunity to send your questions during the presentation using the chat window. Louise has reserved time to address your comments and questions once he concludes his presentation. Louise, it's all yours. Thank you again, Peter. Uh, and again, it's an honor, an honor and a pleasure to be here. Today's uh, a talk will be a joint exploration. It, it's, a, it's a summer lecture. Although it's serious, it's going to be light, um, no tips. It will be just an exploration of aspects of the spiritual world that maybe we are not that aware of. Sylphs, gnomes, undines, do they exist? I mean, outside cartoons such as the, the recent Elemental. And I hope that the title brought to your attention. Are they just myth? What we will do today is that we will jointly explore the spiritist's tests so that together we might form an opinion. Of course, the opinion is going to be of each, uh, each one of us, but let's do that exploration together, okay? By the way, hi, Jusana. You are the only name I see on the comments. So good to have you here. Um, let's begin with the codification. 
Kardec tells us in question 538 uh, that the reply of the spirits, of the codification spirits to his question, do the spirits who preside over the phenomena of nature belong to the higher or lower orders of the spirit hierarchy? That depends on whether their role is more material or intelligence, or less so. Some of those spirits command, others execute. Those who perform material functions are always of a lower order among spirits, just as among human beings. By the way, to those who do not know uh, my way of uh, uh, building the slides, I have a notation. Each slide of mine has a reference, so I don't say, you know, I think. I just reproduce texts so that we can learn more uh, from people with better perspectives. Um, whatever is in italic is the exact reproduction of the text. That if I have a text in English, I pick the translation. If there's no translation, then I do my own translation. And usually I point that out to you. Uh, I use the codification books that are published by SEI. Uh, I, uh, I like them in both in Portuguese and in English. So those are my reference tests. Whatever is in you know, normal letters was written by me or has been an adaptation, changed words maybe, but uh, I, I keep the original meaning. Continuing with the codification that has actually a whole section dedicated to the action of spirits on the phenomena of nature. The question, do the spirits who act upon the phenomena of nature do so with full awareness and in virtue of their free will or out of an instinctive and unreasoning impulse? And the answer from the spirits is, the least advanced spirits are useful to the general whole. While preparing for life and before having full awareness of their acts and before they have free will, they act upon certain phenomena in which they are unwitting agents. So by reading and exploring this test, we are learning that the less advanced spirits uh, do not have full, uh, full awareness of their act and also do not yet have free will. And do we, while doing this on the next tests, we will learn more stuff about them. By the way, the underlines, they are for me so that I can remember the important points when talking to you. In 1860, I found the first reference in Spiritist tests to the word elemental. Uh, they are or they come from the Spiritist Review, March 1860, uh, whose original cover I found, and it's uh, in the picture on the left. There was a communication by a spirit called Hetani. And regarding this communication, maybe two, three pages ahead, the spirit St. Louis gives a few comments and answer to a few questions regarding that communication. And when doing this, the Spirit St. Louis tells us, the elemental spirit, see the reference to the word elemental, before moving onto the animal series, focuses their fluidic action onto vegetal creation. Such a spirit has not incarnated yet. They only act under the direction of more elevated intelligences that have already lived enough to acquire the necessary knowledge of their mission. 
It was one of those, one of the most, the more elevated intelligences that actually communicated. And he confirms there are two classes of spirits who act upon uh, uh, the vegetal creation, actually to the phenomena of nature. That's because the spirit Hectani talked about uh, uh, vegetals. Anyway, we have one more hint regarding the elementals. The spirit St. Louis Lautel now tells us that they have not incarnated yet. So they are not yet in a cycle of reincarnation. Isn't that interesting? The plot thickens. Dr. Paul Gibier, he was not a spiritist. He was a, uh, a person who studied spiritism and other sciences. I understand he was actually a physical doctor. Uh, he wrote this book in 1891. So we are now 30 years after the publication of the Spirit's book. In his book, Le Spiritisme, and by the way, the original in French physical book reprint is available in French. He tells us, there exists a category of beings, an immaterial world living alongside us and manifesting their presence under certain conditions. This is not new to us. These beings have been known throughout our ages by names such as genies, fairies, sylvans, elves, gnomes, imps, and more. This theory, and he calls it a theory, is connected with that of the Buddhists of India and Europe, the so-called Theosophists, which places phenomena under the influence of incomplete vital spirits, unfinished beings called elementals. So, he calls them incomplete vital spirits. Mm -hmm. He mentioned, and I clicked the wrong place here, out of back in, he mentions theosophy. Let's dedicate his light to theosophy. Theosophy was actually the, uh, uh, founded by Madame Blavatsky, that my mother, who is probably watching but does not place a message, uh, uh, like so much. Uh, in the book, The Secret Doctrine, Madame Blavatsky uh, uh, wrote that elementals, the forces of nature, are the secondary causes, not the primary, the secondary causes that operate invisibly imperceptibly. These elementals, in turn, will only become human monads in the next great planetary manvatara. Essentially, she's saying that elementals are not human spirits. That's, again, a co uh, uh, consistent with everything we have been exploring in the texts. And by the way, if you're curious, Mangvantara is a, a, a Hindu term and refers to a cycle of a spiritual development. So nothing that no to us as spiritists. And we proceed. And by the way, I hope there's somebody there watching because I cannot see in my screen how many are watching. And only Jusara and Mark wrote a message. Come on, Louise, you have been talking about texts before 1900s, and they are not strictly some of them spiritist. Okay, let's move to Nosso Lar. I'm sure you've read Nosso Lar. But did you notice the end in the final chapter of Nosso Lar, a mention of elementals without using the name? 
Em nosso lar, at the final chapter, André Luiz wishes to help Ernesto, who is ill. Remember, Ernesto is the uh, uh, second husband of his former wife. In this effort to help Ernesto, incarnated Ernesto, of course, he mentally called Narcisa, the uh, uh, discarnated nurse in Osular who helped him so much in the earlier chapters, and I'm sure. And in the words of Adela Luiz, or reducing the text, after something, some 20 minutes, I felt a light touch in my shoulder. It was Narcisa who had and my call. Remember, André Luiz is here on earth, close to his house, or to his former house, where his wife and children live. Narcisa tells him, we must resort to nature. And they walk, after arriving at a place filled with enormous trees, tells us André, Narcisa called out, someone with words I could not understand. In a few moments, eight entities responded. To my great surprise, I saw Narcisa ask them whether there were mango and eucalyptus trees in the neighborhood. He received the required information from friends, those spirits, who were unknown to me. Narcisa turned to me and explains the brothers who have come to our aid are ordinary works in the workers sorry in the vegetable kingdom that's an interesting reference to beings involved in the phenomena of nature and almost surely mentos although the name is not used here so we have another uh, a hint they help, they act under the direction of others, as mentioned before. This is probably a book that you have never read by Herculano Pires. Herculano Pires is a known name in Brazil. He has translated uh, a number of, of the books of the codification and other books. He, is a, he was a Brazilian journalist, philosopher, writer, translator, and discarnated on 79. And one of the books he wrote, O Centro Espírita, uh, uh, mentions that the apparent mechanism of nature is laden with intentions. The Greek physiologists knew this, and when Thales, Thales was a Greek, referred to the gods that filled the world in all its dimensions, he affirmed that the spiritual principle, that the planetary structure in its smallest details is controlled by the spirits entrusted with the maintenance of Earth. Ranging from the simple elementals, the lower order spirits that we have been talking about, and that's the focus of this conversation, is still evolving toward human conditions to the higher spirits, nearing angelical realms who oversee and guide terrestrial activities. This is a 1955 book. We are getting closer to our day very, very close to the time that Nosola has been published. Okay, I see more live people in the comments. Sally and Ethan, good that you were listening. Please go on. The end is the best part of this presentation. So do not disconnect. Let's move to liberation. And I know that you guys have studied liberation. At least Joan, who is watching, and Jussar, I know they have studied. But do you remember this passage? In chapter 4, in a certain moment, Instructor Gubbio, who went down with them to the uh, uh, deep darkness to, you know, uh, uh, try to help that cardinal, but I'm not going to tell you the story because I want you to read it. And part of my mission here and in all my talks is to present to you new books, books that you've never heard about, 
So that made you get interested and you read them. Anyway, Instructor Gubbio was explaining to the people who were with him, including Andre Luis. This, the place where they were, is an enormous purgatory colony. Those who were not undergoing dolorous regenerative penitence here, oh, say, uh, meaning most who were doing dolorous penitence there. The other are subhuman intelligences, thousands of creatures used in the harshest work of nature and that are active in this infra terrestrial place. By the way, I have a few problems with this particular translation, but I used the text in the book by Feb. For now, goes on Google, their ignorance does not confer the glory of responsibility on them. Meaning, those elementals that are talking about that, you know, uh, are the low-level workers, involved in the phenomena of nature, they are not responsible for what they do. So they don't incarnate, they don't have free will, and they are not responsible for what they do. But let's move on. Gubbio continues. As they developed their dignified tendencies, they apply for incarnate humanity. The translation is not good. In Portuguese, is something like, uh, um, they evolve in direction of incarnate humanity. Continuing, they are between the fragmentary reasoning of apes and the simple ideas of primitive human beings. They can either become attached to incarnate personalities or they can blindly, blindly obey the powerful spirits that control places like this one. So now we are learning that they not only do not have free will, do not reincarnate, uh, do not have responsibility, but obey not only good spirits like Narcisa, but also powerful spirits, not very bright, that control places like this one. Mm -hmm. They hold on to the naivety of the primitive and the faithfulness of the dog. So they are naive and faithful. The contact with certain individuals inclines them either to good or to evil. And we are responsible, tells Gubbio, the translation say for, but what he's being, he means is, is by. Now, we are responsible, uh, uh, or we are accountable, what would be a better word, by the superior forces that govern us regarding the type of influence we exert on the infantile minds of such creatures. Meaning, uh, we spirits that use the elementals to do things for us, we are responsible and we will be held accountable by the superior spirits regarding what we have them doing for us. You see how we are learning more and more about the elementals by studying the references we have from spiritist texts, many of them written by spirits who are now in the spirit or who were then in the spiritual world. They might be spirits such as us, but as I usually uh, uh, remind Elmo, Elmo is a gentleman from the, from the New York, from the SGNY. They have, you know, a different perspective from things that we do. So they see things differently especially things from the spiritual world uh, regarding guys like myself who don't see anything. So it's very, very interesting to listen to what they say, to hear, to, to read what they write. 
so that we can also have their perspective on things and expand our knowledge. Now I move to Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, psychographed by Divaldo Franco. In this book, this book is called Locura e Obsessão, in English would be Madness and Obsession. Unfortunately, this book is not yet available in English, so this is my translation. So that you have uh, uh, a context. Felinto is a, uh, a spiritual entity, was introduced to Manuel Filomeno de Miranda by Dr. Bezerra. They are all in the spiritual world, uh, but they are actually in a spiritual center where activities are being held. Uh, Felinto is talking to the group, but actually to Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, uh, about the elementals. And here he called them enchanted. In the religious culture of the past and present, tells them Felito, we will find these beings, the elementals, under the denomination of devas, elementals, fairies, genies, sylphs, elves, jinns, fauns. Elena Blavatska, that we talked about and we showed a part of a text, has conducted an exhaustive research on this matter <coughs> and extensively classified them. Kabbalists also classified the more evolved elementals in charge of air, earth, fire, and water. They would be the gnomes, sylph, salamanders, and undines, so overused uh, even in cartoons, as some of you have noted. Uh, Felinto continues, there's no exceptional attribute criteria to these beings in their creation. They are not special. We know that they are in evolutionary transition, confirming a lot that we have read, is still lacking discernment. They are innocent and simple in their intimate spiritual structure. They are used by spirits, whether incarnate or not. This is new. Huh? Incarn uh, incarnated spirits using elementals to do tasks for one activity or another, as demonstrated by experience in this field. Mm -hmm. Now I move to a short text. Uh, that's present in a publication by Chico Xavier Institute. Uh, Chico Xavier Institute is a Brazilian nonprofit organization dedicated to the, uh, uh, what's the word for divulgation in English, to the spread of the Spiritist doctrine and of the Spiritist book. In this text, they explain so clearly that I took the liberty of using it. They say that in the Cardician codification, the term elemental does not exist in this form and with this specific name, that's true. But just as many terms were not used in the codification, but over time were revealed and employed by the spirits in auxiliary works and integrated into the common spiritist vocabulary. Very clear. Terms such as ovoid, umbral, vampirism, spiritual colonies, zoanthropy, lycanthropy, etc. And that's true of elementals. It is not there in the codification. The term itself did not exist, but the idea did, as we have seen, albeit under different names. But the important thing is that the idea existed. 
And the idea, uh, this is a long phrase, but I, tr I decided not to cut it in pieces. In English, it's very complicated to, to use phrases such as that, but I'll try. The idea that exist spirits who, moving with the law of progress and in a continuous state of evolution, can be found in spiritism without possessing any mystical connotation, any connotation linking to occultism or the like. Saying everything together now. The idea that exists spirits moving from the animal kingdom and not yet having reached the human realm and that are in an intermediary state called elemental or pre-human or subhuman stage, it's not mystical, it's not linked to occultism or the like, it's just something that is in nature. In reality, they are the serving spirits of nature, the executors of natural phenomena, or rather, they are the spirits of the elements of nature, from which the term elemental derives. That's a neat explanation, isn't it? That's why I borrowed it. This is another book that you probably never heard of. It's from Edgar Armand. It's called Mediunidade, Mediumship. It's not available in English, unfortunately. It was published in, excuse me, 1951. And it has been reprinted and this uh, uh, front in this cover, by the way, on the left is obviously from a reprint, a recent reprint. And Edgar tells us that elementals, singular and mysterious beings whose existence is acknowledged by many and ignored by most, Photon R, the, uh, R is missing there. Their most useful and interesting task is precisely to influence animals, leading them to act in one way or another. We can say that they, the elementals, are the authors of instinctual manifestation among animals, themselves, each in their own kind, embody instinct, simple, natural, imperative, violent, spontaneous. So they are instinctive. It's so consistent with all that we have read, that they do not have free will, that they uh, uh, respond to others, that they are servants. Now we move from another book that you've probably never heard of. It was written by Antonio Carlos Pastorino in 1974, called Technique of, Medi of Mediumship. There he tells us that elemental spirits or spirits of the elements of nature have been divided since ancient times according to the elements, Gnomes of the earth, undines of the water, sylphs of air, and salamanders of fire. Others are also mentioned. Fairy, gnomes, satyr, fauns, sylvans, elves, dwarfs. I am giving, giving names to them now. Huh? Apart from their chiefs and guides, they have not incarnated as human preparing for it through their interactions with the human race, totally consistent with what we have read. Although they possess psychic forces, they have not yet developed as spirits, individualities. This is new. They do not have individualities yet, and therefore they only possess concrete reasoning, not yet using speech as a means of expressing their thoughts, that's new as well. They can obey orders from trained beings, good or bad, to carry out either good or evil, which they still do not distinguish, this we knew. Therefore, their responsibility falls entirely on those 
who we should the others. So now we are forming a concept of what elementals are. They seem to be there. Huh? Hmm. We move now to a text uh, from Casas André Luiz. Actually, Casas André Luiz is a very important spiritist institution in Sao Paulo. They have four orientation centers and they do a lot of service. And it's good to have a chance to mention them here. And they have a text where they say that the elementals are singular, multiform beings, invisible, ever present in all activities of nature beyond the physical plane. They, say they serve as vehicles of creative will, enhancing the forces, laws, and natural processes. They are found everywhere, on earth's surfaces, in the atmosphere, in the waters, in the depths of the subcrust, alongside the fearly element. Invisible to human eyes, they tirelessly and discreetly carry out immense work in various aspects within the realms of nature on minerals, plants, animals, and humans. And the last comment is by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. And I put it together here so that we, we wouldn't have an, another slide. And the FEB tells us that elementals as intermediaries between humans and animals possess bodily structures similar not equal, similar to those seen in the latter. Now, in the latter, it means animals. Wings, anatomical aspects of head, ears, eyes, feet, hands, among others. So they are saying that they probably have a physical appearance that is sort of in between the human and animal with, you know, combinations of those. And now we get to the meat. Divaldo Franco has something to say about it. And I know that you know Divaldo Franco, Jussara, who's watching, João, are friends with him. Maybe you have a chance to talk about this with him. Anyway, some time ago, maybe 1992, that's the reference I found, but it's, it's been published in many places, but the magazines are not active anymore, so I, I'm not sure. I'm citing here the, the magazine O Mensageiro, but it was also published in a magazine called Allan Kardec magazine in 1992, volume five. August to October 1992, so it was a trimester, a quarterly uh, uh, magazine. And let's follow this interview with Ivado Franco. They ask him, point blank, do the so-called elemental spirits or spirits of nature exist? Yes, said Ivado. There are spirits that contribute in favor of the development of natural resources. Throughout all ages, they have been known, identified through various names, becoming a part of the mythologies of peoples, and some of them becoming gods who are both feared and loved. So, Givaldo clearly states, yes, they exist. What is the evolutionary stage of these spirits? He is asked. Some are of a higher category and command the less evolved ones who willingly submit to them, working for personal and general progress as assistance to those who oversee the phenomena of nature. So, are they hierarchically subjected to another higher order of spirits? According to the role they play, whether of greater 
or lesser intelligence, they become responsible for numerous phenomena or contribute to their occurrence. Those who focus on lower, more material occurrences, those we are talking about, are therefore due to the very activity they perform, less advanced, and are subjected to higher, elevated ones who command and guide them. Very good view from Divaldo, but we learned also that they are also subject sometimes to lower spirits, unfortunately, who uh, uh, developed ways to manipulate them. Continue Divaldo. Do these spirits appear in defined forms, such as fairies, gnomes, sylphs, elves, satyrs, etc.? Some of them, answers Divaldo. If not the great majority of the less evolved ones, who have not yet had the reincarnations on earth, confirming what we had, have had, often present themselves in special forms and small dimensions. I think this is the first time we've read small dimensions, which gave rise to various names in mythological societies of the past. We personally believe, through mediumistic experiences, that some live in the intermediate period between primitive and human forms, preparing themselves, preparing themselves for future human reincarnations. Confirm what we have learned, but also he's saying that he personally formed his opinion through mediumistic experience. This, I think, is very powerful. I like very much the experimental side of spiritism that reveals and that the, the word is not revealed is that uh, uh, okay, I'll use reveal that reveals to us a, an actual perspective of the spiritual world. That's not written text. It's felt, experienced by someone. And finally, are the elementals native or did they come from other planets? Personally, tells Givaldo, we believe that an immense number originated on Earth, while others came from different worlds in order to contribute to the progress of our planet. And that's new. We might have elementals here in this world that came from different worlds. That's something that Divaldo believed. And I actually, uh, uh, okay, I don't know, and uh, I actually uh, uh, place a lot of credibility on what Divaldo believes. And I believe you do too, you do as well. And now, two final slides. I will faithfully uh, uh, stick to my time, to the time allotted to me. This is a personal communication that was given to me. And it, this happened in the first half of this year, 2023. I was in a mid-unic session in Grupo Fraterno. Uh, together with my wife, by the way, and other people who might or might not have noticed what I, I, I did notice. And during this session, this, this meeting, uh, Mario was the dialoguer interacting with a uh, errant spirit who he was trying to direct. Uh, uh, through, a, an, through a medium. I don't remember the name of the medium, by the way. I think it was closer. Anyway. No, it was not. It was not. Anyway, that's important. And during this dialogue, this thing happened. Mario told the spirit, listen, listen to the spirit that's in front of you now. 
and the medium did this, and he asked it, that one? And Mario said, no, that's an elemental, the other one, the one that is dressed in blue. And that really caught my attention. This was the first time I had an actual indication and confirmation of the presence of an elemental spirit close by, like four meters from me, three meters from me or whatever. That really impressed me. Uh, uh, later, and João, by the way, knows Mario, João Cornegal, that's watching, I hopefully. Uh, uh, afterwards, I, you know, got hold of Mario and asked, Mario, do you remember this thing and, you know, the, the elemental that you mentioned? And he said, yes, I remember. I asked, you know, a little more that I would not have produced in the test here. And he said, because I asked, did you actually see it or it was just, you know, uh, uh, an intuition that you had? No, uh, I could see a glimpse of it. It was a fast glimpse, but I could see a glimpse of it. And I asked, and how high it was? He said, About one meter height, uh, uh, you know, I didn't ask about features. I thought I was, you know, exploring too much and I pulled back. But he went on. Yes, I like the subject. I have studied it, as you know. There's that part in the Spirit's book, question 536 and onwards. And he went on and said, I said, and then he mentions, sometimes I see them. Actually, I have even seen them in the garden here in the back. Uh, of Grupo Fraterno Spiritus Center. The picture there is not of that garden because I do not have a picture of that particular garden, but it's sort of similar. Shelves and a, a lot of flower pots and, and, and trees, but it's a small, a small garden. So they are around us. The same way uh, uh, I, I'm always repeating Kardec's words that, you know, the spirits are around us, you know, uh, uh, I, I forgot how to say that in English, but sticking their elbows on us and uh, probably there are discarnated spirits here around me watching this lecture. Actually, I have heard that from the spirits in, 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 in mediumistic sessions and probably there are discarnated spirits around you as well when you are watching this either live or uh, uh, later on, but more than that, maybe there are elementals around us here now. The spirits that are not yet in the reincarnation cycle, the spirits that are working towards become primitive human spirits, the spirits that do not have free will, and spirits with whom we have a responsibility, and that we will be accountable if we use them to not so good deeds. I hope with this presentation I have opened, uh, no, I want my slide back, come on. I have opened a, a, a little larger window in the spiritual world to you by discussing a topic that's not usually uh, uh, mention. I did a lot of research, research, and thankfully you have the internet these days because it would require me a huge library and weeks to do the same thing, or maybe months to do the same thing. But with the internet, we can do it very, very, very efficiently, so that I could give you good references of the actual existence of the elementals and what are their characteristics. So, what do you think now? And I ask objectively, how will you react if your son or daughter or your grandson or granddaughter comes to you and say, hey, I just saw something in the garden. It was not a person. Could it be a fairy? or a sylph, what will you say?
I am sure that now, after this lecture, you will think twice, at least, before answering. But I'm not going to give you the answer. And that was it for today. Thank you so much for being here watching. Thank you, Louise. Thank you for these reflections. It is a fascinating topic indeed. And it's uh, and generated a few questions. So let's see what we have. This is from the US Spiritist Federation. How do we begin to recognize when we are evolved enough to take more responsibility for our intentions as well as our actions? Well, I don't know how, my friend. Unfortunately, I don't know how. Uh, and that's slightly off the subject of elementals. But... Well, I don't think I can give you an insight to, into this one. Actually, I'm going to ask Joan Kornigold about it. Maybe I okay. can get an answer. I think part of the idea of that question was when um, you think about how as we're evolving into the spirits we are, we're we going out of the animal state and more into the uh, development of our morality and our intelligence. Maybe that was it, but I, I couldn't understand the whole thing. Anyway, there was a question there and just disappeared. Ah. Okay, here we are from the International Spiritist Council. Louise, what are some of the similarities and differences between theosophy and spiritism? Oh boy, you could you you know could you write a master thesis uh, on on this. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't know if I can resume that well. I'm not a profound, know, uh, uh, profoundly knowable of theosophy. But there is a common ground, and that relates to uh, cause and consequence, to the continuity of the soul with reincarnation. Theosophy has borrowed a lot from the old Hindu philosophies. And that matches well with spiritism. On the other hand, there are many differences. Uh, for myself, I found that the most important part of spiritism that does not exist on theosophies and other similar philosophies that my friend Eric, who is watching, likes to study, is that spiritism has the tripod of not only religion on the sense of, you know, unsupported belief, but also has the science side, besides the doctrinal side, but the science side, the experimental side, is permanently supporting the concepts that have been explained to us. So we uh, uh, have a continuous uh, experiential support that's not the core, but that gives a tremendous power to the ideas of the doctrines uh, in, uh, that are part of the spirit. So maybe in a two-minute thing, I, I highlighted some of the common things and the separate things. But if we look for it, maybe there is a master thesis on the subject somewhere. No, that was a good answer. And it's certainly a big subject, uh, more than one thought probably. There was okay. an ovoid thing that disappeared anyway, but <laughs> go on. This one's from Jasada Korngold. The study and understanding of elemental present in creation contributes to increasing respect towards nature, therefore to become more conscientious about ecology, don't you think? I'm sure Jusara, I love Jusara, she's a dear friend. And on, on last talk, I made a lot of questions. So now she is punishing me with good questions. I, I am reading the difficult questions, by the way, Jusara. Uh, yes, I definitely agree with you. I think uh, the understanding of the elemental uh, allow us to become more conscious about ecology. Uh, actually, I think the, the dimension is even, it, it's more than that. Uh, we do not, appreciate as as deeply as 
we should. The profound interference of spirits, not only elemental spirits, but the directing spirits on the constitution of the earth, of the solar system, of you know the Milky Way, the universe as a whole. Uh, uh, we know that all this is has been orchestrated and is continually being orchestrated and definitely ecology is critical as, as you guys in the northern hemisphere are seeing uh, uh, in this hot 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 summer okay thank you for that answer by the way uh Zusara added here uh, to my theosophy thing that theosophy has a more scientific approach in the sense that they are more worried about the phenomena than with the result in the human being morally speaking it's a perspective that i didn't have thank you Zusara. okay all right next question from the U u.s spiritist federation can you explain <laughs> what is an ovoid and what is lycanthropy <laughs> Sure, I can, and I'm here probably mimicking Joan Carnegie's explanation. An ovoid is a discarnated spirit, a spirit in the, the spirit world, that be, usually because he has a totally fixed idea on something, revenge or whatever. He loses form and form and form, and he becomes an entity without form. That's why it's called an ovoid. And you can see interesting references of it in the book Liberation that I have mentioned. Uh, there are passages where you have, you know, many ovoids uh, uh, obsessing a, a, a person, if I remember well. So, a void is a spirit that loses form, usually because it is focused on a single idea. It, take a it takes a long time for him to recover of that. Lycanthropy uh, is when a spirit assumes a form of a wolf-like wolf animal, obviously while discarnated. Uh, this is something you see references and I have been present in medianistic meetings where uh, uh, the dialoguer has mentioned that he's seeing the spirit there in, you know, in a wolf-like form and he, you know, takes action to tame the thing. But it's the cantropy is the changing of the external perispiritual appearance so that it looks like an animal in case of lycanthropy in in aspect that is wolf like. I hope that's a good explanation. But if it's wrong, please, Jusara, correct me. No, that was a good explanation. So part of the <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Work with the spirit and try to get it to get out of that mode of thinking. Okay, this is from Eric uh, Cavanaghi. Sorry for mispronounce. Does all kinds of beings exist under some kind of social hierarchical organization with bosses and subordinates? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, good to hear from you. I, I, I know that this is a, a, a point that really bothers you. And unfortunately, I cannot do anything about it. Everything I have read, if there is something that is absolutely clear, is that the spiritual world has a form of hierarchical organization. Yes, it is. It seems to be heavily hierarchical based on development, individual development, uh, merit, and other things. But yes, unfortunately, Everything we experience, everything we read, uh, uh, every interaction with phalanges, with, I don't know how to say that in English, in, in medianistic meetings, we perceive that, yes, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, but yes, it is pretty hierarchical as far as we know. Okay. 
Uh, you said phalanx, right? A, a small army. Oh, phalanx. Yes, good. Yeah, it's like a small army of, of soldiers. Yeah. It, it's, anyway. it's an expression we use when sometimes a, a mm -hmm. powerful but not as developed spirit uh, congregates a number of other spirits to do things for him. Right. I don't know if you use the same expression in English. Yeah, that's close. That's basically a spirit that dominates a whole group of spirits. Um, and yes, the word hierarchy certainly applies to that. Okay, let's see. Next question. This is from uh, Yasko Artava. Fascinating in what extent are those elemental spirits guarding, for instance, the Amazon forest? How the devastation we are causing there are affecting their evolution path and also our evolution. Hmm. Thank you for, for the good word, for the fascinating word. Uh, very difficult question. Uh, uh, I can only guess because those things are not, you know, uh, uh, clear to, to my knowledge. Obviously, they have limited powers to guard not only the Amazon forest, but the forests in Europe or whatever, uh, uh, against the free will of humans. We understand that there are some spirits allocated to deforested zones for some reason. But I don't know what's their objective and how do they act and how how can they uh, uh, help. Obviously, our evolution is very impacted by deforestation and other attacks to to our uh, uh, earth. And hopefully, it will be here half decently when we reincarnate again. So I definitely hope that our generation and next generations. Uh, uh, use our free will to do a better job that we have been doing the last 200 centuries, 200 years to, you know, uh, uh, stabilize uh, uh, the earth and give us a place that we can, you know, reincarnate and uh, evolve. But I don't know in what extent they are guarding. Sorry an interesting question. It, it kind of makes one wonder how much are elemental spirits vulnerable to the way we treat our environment? Not sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next question. International Spiritist Council, can you discuss our evolution from the moment we are created to the human phase? What are the stages we go through? The Spirit's book tells us clearly that uh, uh, we do not know how spirits are created. So the origin of spirits is unknown. This is there, clearly written. We have hints for, from auxiliar, auxiliary works that spirits are not created in the human phase. I have not found anything clearly stating this in the codification. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, I've seen different interpretations. Uh, we've seen explanations that use the word monad. That was in, I believe in, Blavatsky's work that probably she was the originate. She was the first one who used the word who has a different meaning in this meaning. I don't know. Uh, so a spirit would go through a monad phase before a human phase. There are texts that suggest that spirits go through mineral, vegetable, animal phases before. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it's one of the explanations we read. And today we learned that elementals, 
might evolve to become humans, but we do not know the intermediary phases. It is suggested, if you read between the lines and longer texts, that they would be from become, be, after animal spirits uh, gaining not yet individuality, as is, is uh, uh, explained in the test, but before humans. Blavaska say before monads. So this sequence, mineral, vegetal, animal, uh, uh, elemental, monad, human spirits, seems to be a plausible sequence, but I don't know if it is correct. Uh, uh, it's not clearly written in the codification. Hi there, Peter. The image is frozen. I don't know if I am the one frozen. This question is from the U.S. Spiritist Federation. Are some mediums more like... Okay, I got the question. I don't know if I am frozen or not but I will consider that I'm not frozen. I am monitoring a key image and it, it, it seems that I am alive. Uh, I don't know. I, obviously, the, the easy question, the easy answer is yes. Uh, uh, I haven't heard many reports by mediums and I, I talk a lot with mediums. Uh, regarding seeing elementals. Actually, I didn't expect them to see them until, you know, this, this year that I saw a reference. So I will do some, you know, one-to-one -one questioning. But I think the, the easy answer is clearly some mediums have more, uh, 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 have different characteristics from the other. And it would be very, very easy to presume that, yes, yeah, some are more likely to see elemental than others. Thank you, Shusara. I am alive. It's a comment Shusara said that. <laughs> and thank you, Hakel, for the good words. Okay, uh, looks like I'm frozen again. Uh, I understand your point, Michael, that you wish there was a center close to where you live. Yes, there was a question before that that I didn't reply. So if you guys place it again, I will try to do my best. Arthur Conan Doyle made extensive studies about elementals and published some books as well. Jusara, I wasn't aware of it. Nowhere in my research I I. I Touch Arthur Conan Doyle and Elementals. It was a gap. Sorry about that. Missed that one. Okay. We had a little technical issue. Uh, yes. The, um, that happens. So we have a comment from Raquel, Raquel Leon Paulo. Thank you very much for this well supported presentation. Thank you for the kind words and, and for watching. Comment. Yes, and Mark Paulo says, Thank you. fabulous research and beautiful presentation. And Peter, I should point out that I, I stuck to the 50 minutes, huh? You did. I am, a, I am a well behaved presenter. Extremely well behaved presenter. So we thank you very much. And we thank you for your time with us today. And we thank all of you who watched the today's. Uh, live talk and those who have been following our weekly Spiritist Talk series. Next Saturday, we will have Livia uh, Travistani, Travistani talking about destiny of children in the spirit world. That should be an interesting subject as well. Louise, before we close this live, can you please say a prayer for us? Sure. Let's thank our mentors, the mentors of our spiritual centers to allow us to study together and to learn more about the spirit world, to learn more about the spirits, learn more about ourselves, allowing us to improve, 
to become better, to understand better. We should thank also the incarnates that allow our spirit center to work, to allow us to be there and work. The incarnates who also allow us to have this presentation, to be together, to give the technical support. Thanks to them, we can be in Brazil and the United States and study the same things. We should always thank those spirits discarnated who dedicate their time to tell us about things that we do not know that we do not remember from our last passage in the spirit world allowing us to have a better view of things now we we should also thank those fantastic mediums that dedicated so much time like chico xavier like divaldo franco and others transmitting those thoughts to us we should ask our mentors that we can incorporate what we learn from this class and all the classes and all the readings that we do so that we become better persons, better spiritists as well. And also, I want to thank all discarnate beings that are around us for, for watching. I hope this has been a little clarifying to you that although light that gave you a better perspective of things and also of course thank my incarnate uh, uh, watchers here so thank you Christina Mahler thank you Eric thank you Amos thank you Sally Ling Eaton for being there. Thank you, Mark, for the comments. Yes, I did not know that Divaldo had an international, had a, a, a what you mentioned here. Uh, thank you, Michael, Jussara, Rose, João, Raquel, Eric, Conceição, my wife, Daniela, and all others who did not place messages. It's been an honor being here. Thank you.